Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for the welcome and for having me here at Bogota. So today I will be speaking about vehicle and driving data and its application for road vehicle, for road safety, and how to get valuable dat data insights from that. I will make a little bit of an introduction of the project and what we do. I will talk about GeoTab, uh, what we do, what data we get, and how we use it for smart city applications. And then I will get a little bit more specifics, uh, talking about a data set of accidents of 2017 in Bogota. And of course, I will leave some time for the conclusions and future lines of work and questions. So just before starting, uh, I want to share why I wanted to focus on road safety. So the first number project, you know it better than me. It's uh, have 10 million people, around 10 million people living here in Bogota. And in the data set I found, that data set is of accidents, only the reported accidents, so probably there are a lot more. We got 33,800 accidents in 2017. Uh, from then I got 15,000 injured people. That makes one accident every 290 people and one injury every 660 people in that year. So what if we could make this better, if we could prevent some of these accidents to reduce these numbers? And this is what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, just before that, uh, what tools we should use for that kind of, uh, of analysis and why Python? Just list here some of my favorite features. It's, as you know, it's simple, it's easy to read, it's general purpose, and my f the best for this are the is flexibility, and that is one of the best options for data processing, visualization, and machine learning. So inside GeoTab, we use Python a lot. For the first step, we can use this. We have a lot of data. We are the 11th company in the world in Google Cloud use. And for the first step, we always, always need, need powerful SQL tools such as B Google BigQuery to process that. And after that, we combine that with uh, other tools such as Airflow, Dataflow, Python, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, TensorFlow, Stick Learn, Keras, and a lot of others. Uh, and with that, we build uh, data sets to, Im to improve smart cities and road safety. Also, Python allows us to go beyond and develop machine learning products that can help uh, evolve our solutions. So now, what's GeoTap and what we do? So uh, GeoTap is a telematics company from Canada. We develop this device here, it's uh, called a Go device, that connects to the OBD port of the vehicles uh, it's the diagnostic port of uh, any truck, car, and we collect data from there. We collect GPS, we collect engine measurements, among others. The, the main goal of this is to improve road uh, to help fleet managers. If you have noticed, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well with the light, but the background is an image of Bogota. Uh, that's just with a blank blue background and with GPS points from our devices in Bogota. So I told you we collect more than GPS. I'm going to stop a little bit to tell you what data. So from GPS, we can associate it with the drivers. We get the coordinates. We get the speed, of course, the date and times. And then we get engine measurements. In engine measurements, we can get faults, such as the ABS fault. We can get where if we have a brake fault, seatbelt fault, even and then we get engine measurements. In engine measurements, there is data such as fuel level, trip fuel used, the temperature, the, the coolant level, the oil level, any the seat values, and any engine data we can get from the OBD port and the canvas. Then we have accelerometers inside the device. So we have a three-axis accelerometer, and we can get details on the driving patterns and driving styles. We can get when a vehicle is harsh braking, when it's harsh cornering, when it's harsh accelerating, and even unusual uh, forces in the vertical axis. Uh, with that, we can calculate rules. So we can join, for example, the speed data with the speed, informa with the speed limit information from the roads and get real speed in incidents. Then we calculate trips. We add features to every trip. Uh, like the distance, durations, how much time driving, how much time uh, idling, 
everything, and we join that with uh, geospatial information and external tools such as beam decoding tools to understand the type of the vehicle. So now that you know a little bit about what data we get, how much data we get, so we are collecting right now over 30 billion data points per day from more than 1.4 million devices. Uh, only a third of those, point, those points are GPS devices. The other are the vehicle files, engine measurements, the accelerometer. And the picture here again shows locations by our devices. This is just one day of data in the US. Uh, to help you understand how all, what all this data means, I add here some more numbers. So 24, if we add all the kilometers driven by our vehicles in one month, we could make 24 trips to the sun. That's 85% more than the last year that we did. We were doing at this month, we were doing 13 trips to the sun. Uh, those are 3.6 billion kilometers in one month of driving data. So on average, our customers lock 1.5 million hours of driving in one day. That's the equivalent of 170 years of driving data in just one day for our customers. And this is maybe the most interesting one for these projects. Uh, 60 million is the number of erratic driving events we are getting in one month. This is uh, harsh braking, harsh cornering, speeding, uh, harsh acceleration, all that. So, uh, yeah. One thing you need to get through when you are managing that amounts of data is you have to make sure that you are getting high quality data. So other normal solutions use a time-based sampling algorithm. They sample every one minute, every two minutes, 30 seconds, and they save that data. But obviously you can lose some important data there. What we use is a patented curve algorithm that gets we get data every second, second by second, and then we only save the minimum data to interpolate that afterwards and be able to recreate, for example, in this case, the route or the speeding chart. Uh, these examples are with GPS and speeding, but we also use it for the accelerometer, the fuel level, every engine measurements. So with all this data, as I told you, we get it into BigQuery and then we, use, uh, we combine it with, uh, with uh, some of the other tools to create uh, powerful data solutions. So some years ago, we started exploring to see what we could do with our data. Uh, and the first thing we realized, we needed to anonymize, anonymize it and aggregate it. So we started using GeoHAS. GeoHAS is a coordinate codification that helps us to understand instead of analyze per vehicle, we analyze per area. So we had information inside that area. Uh, I will go now through some of those solutions we are producing, so you can understand this better. The first one is uh, maybe one of the most popular ones, is the hazardous driving areas. So we know in which areas of the city we are having more hash braking, more hash cornering, more hash accelerating, more speeding than the usual, and we can even quantify how much worse than other areas is, and we develop the hazardous driving areas data set. I put here two, two examples so I can, you can understand it better. The one here is uh, we detected that there were some hazardous areas next to, a, next to another, like in a line. So we decided to go and check as it was in Canada, that one. And those are uh, the ha uh, warehouse areas where we have a lot of heavy trucks uh, circulating and there was bad signalization and close corners. So you get a lot of trucks coming out of corners, and that's obviously you see a big truck coming out, you are going to hash break your car, so you don't hit him. The other one is in Austin, Texas. So I put it here so you can see it better. We detected that from one month to another, there, were an, there was a new hazardous area. So we decided to check it, and we saw that that month, the traffic light in that intersection was not working. So all the people coming out from the intersection was uh, I mean, if you don't have the traffic light, you are going to stop and see what you can do and probably entering back into the main road. This is very interesting because it can help us be proactive in the, instead of reactive. So you can know where, what is the worst area of the city. You can detect if, if an area is getting worse from one, one month to another. And then you go to that area, you understand what's happening, and you prevent having incidents before they happen. 
all our vehicles to communicate with our platform has a SIM card inside them. So with that SIM card, we get information on the connection status. So we, we know if it is reaching the network, if it is not reaching the network, how good is the connection. And interpolating that with our GPS, we can develop a map the coverage of a city. So on the top here, this is a picture I paint from Bogota. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is uh, very red. So in white we have the good coverage, and this road here in red is the worst area of the city. So I decided to zoom in a little bit and make this map, and we saw that the worst coverage area in the city is a countryside road. Also, the other worst part is a peak here. Uh, this can be very helpful for fleet managers of drivers. If you have the option to choose between two routes, two delivers uh, pro something, you want to go to the route with better coverage. In case of something happens, you can stay connected and, and in an emergency, or if there is any change to the delivery of the route, you can react to this better. And also, normally, the routes with worse coverage are the most dangerous routes. So as we have accelerometers in of all of our vehicles, we can detect the unusual g-forces in the vertical axis. And when we see in an area a lot of vehicles experience that, that is probably that there is a road impediment there. So we quantify them, we put the amount of vehicles passing in a month, how many vehicles are suffering this unusual g-force, and we develop the road impediment detection accident. So I just put two examples here that you can see the cracks on the road and the potholes in, in an area near to the university here. Uh, in some cities, the government has a team of three, four people driving around the city and checking which uh, parts of the road are bad, uh, looking for the road impediments and going to fix them. With this, we can say, hey, the worst area is here, go directly to there, and they will avoid a lot of time. Also. Uh, road impediments in the road affects a lot to the health of the vehicles, and uh, healthier vehicles are, of course, safer roads, so it's important here. One of the most basic things we can do with our data is we can detect when a vehicle is on or off. So uh, we can detect when a vehicle is idling. Uh, idling is when a vehicle is with the engine on and stopped. Uh, so with this data, we can map the areas where the coverage, where the idling is more common. We can know where there are more double parked vehicles, where there are more traffic jams, more last mile delivery, and we can track that. And uh, you can avoid the more busy roads or avoid the roads with more obstacles in in the road with this. One of the engine measurements I told you was the outside temperature. So normally in a city you have one or two meteorologic stations that give you the temperature for this day. We have thousands of vehicles driving around the city with sensors inside of them, sending us the information on the temperature. Even we get the windshield weepers, so we, know when a, we can know when it's raining, how much it's raining, depending on the speed. And we use this data to build the hyper-local weather conditions. So inside the same city, the temperature can be really different depending on how close it is to a lake or to a river, uh, how is the traffic, how tall are the buildings, if there is a park nearby, and with this we can detect those differences. This example is for Toronto, and you can see going it hour by hour through the day. And for example, I choose Toronto as an example, because on winter it can get really cold there, and with this data set we can know which road is going to have more cold, and it's more probably to get ice on the road, so emergency service can go first to that road, help that road, and when that road is safer and has salt in it, they can go to other roads with less danger. This is uh, more basic compared to the other, but I wanted to share it with you too, because we can get the density of the traffic of our vehicles, we can get how much time is it is it stopped the vehicle in an area, how much is costing it to drive through that area compared to the normal time, so if there is more traffic or not, and you can really see the heartbeat, the heartbeat of a city during the day. This is in Washington. One of the obvious utilities to, e to this is help road planning and road, and road works, but other one we have here is understandable disasters. So for examples, we, we check the commercial fleet activity 
before, one week before on the top, and after the Hurricane Harvey. So we can see there is an 88% less of activity after the Hurricane. This is a huge impact for business and customers in that area. Other example we did is the earthquake in Mexico. Our accelerometers, even if the vehicle is off and the device is sleeping, can wake up when they detect a force. So you're going to see it here, how they are more, most of them, they are, the vehicle is sleeping, and when it gets to the critical hour of the earthquake, they wake up, and you will see a lot more vehicles moving. Uh, here you see also the chart. Uh, we you actually, for this one, we only use Python to develop these uh, maps and charts and the analysis. So. Just before going into the data set of Bogota, I wanted to talk a little bit about a project, similar project we did on Spain. In Spain, we have something is called uh, accident black spot. That's when in a year you have more than three victims in accidents in, in an area. So we got a data set of those areas. Uh, we had the details on the most common accident on that area, on the number of uh, casualties, and we categorized them by that. So I did here just some analysis comparing the erratic driving from Geotab and the different categories of the black spots. So one categorization is there by the accident types. So in green here, we have the speeding incidents that are the most common in most of them. For example, in out of road, they are even more predominant than commonly. Uh, that's because vehicles going at higher speeds in a bad road or in curves, they are getting out of the road there. Uh, in overturn, we see in blue, is the only one that we have all this harsh coordinating. And actually this one is in a roundabout in Spain that was not very well signalized. And uh, the relation between harsh cornering and overturn is obvious there. So. And then the most interesting part maybe is the categorization by the number of casualties. So I don't know if you see this. Uh, we have le black spots with less than 10 big uh, casualties, between 10 and 20, and more than 20. So we can see an increase of about 5% which it categories. So as we have more big teams, it's more normal in those areas to detect by our devices speeding incidents. Also, this red line here that we see are the seatbelt infractions, so people driving without the seatbelts around areas that are black spots with more than 20 casualties in a year, and it's the only one where it appears. Uh, this Relations may seem a little bit obvious, but we are proving it with real data, the reason, and when you are proving it, you can go a step further, you can get deeper, analyze the causes, go individually to each of these black spots as the roundabout, understand why there is not a signalization there that, that saying that that is a black spot, so people can go safer. Uh, we can, it can help us, uh, help us understanding everything better and reach solutions faster. So as I was coming to Bogota, I decided, and after that work with Spain, I decided to search a little bit on accidents in Bogota. So I found, I don't know if you have go to this web, but you got really nice and interesting data sets there. So I found a data set of 33,800 accidents in Bogota in 2017. Uh, there were not only the coordinates there, I had the accident types, the road, who had the fault, if there was any specific reason of that accidents, and the number of injured and deaths. So I first, I quickly analyzed this data with uh, comparing to the other data set I showed you from Geotab, that we call them data.geotab.com. And then I analyzed this a little bit, just a first introduction with our raw data to search if there is another interesting data set we call develop there. So as it is the part where you spend most of the time if you are doing something data science, is the understanding the data and shaping it. I decide to stop here and explain you a little bit the process. Then it's nearly 80-90% of the work. You are preparing all the data sets and shaping all the data as you want. So I got the accidents data there. I studied the different type of reasons of accidents, the different accident types, and I started grouping them to easier definitions and levels. And I aggregated that using the GeoHas codification I told you before, and I added uh, features and variables to all of them. 
to that, I had the data.geotab.com datasets. I showed them to you before. They are already prepared, so no need to aggregate or anything there. And then I got uh, Geotab raw vehicle data, engine status, accelerometer data, GPS data. I pass it through a machine learning model that can detect the vocation of the vehicle, so we know if that is a delivery vehicle, a big truck or not, and we've been decoding. And we, with that, I prepare a specific rules for electric driving for each type of vehicle. So I adapt the speeding and the accelerometer steptions to the type of vehicles. Uh, I aggregated again that by area. Uh, we love doing that in Geotap. And I added the speed limit information to get real speeding incidents. So again, I normalize all the data and then I could start the analysis. So first of it, uh, this is just some quick things you can get using data.geotap.com really easily. And the most obvious thing was checking how this looks with the hazardous areas, the, how the accident areas look with the hazardous areas. So in total, I got 3.5 thousand areas with more than two accidents. And when I joined that with data.geotap.com hazardous areas, I got 90 hazardous areas with accidents. So in the global areas with accidents, like in all the areas with accidents, looking at that, 10% has more than 10 accidents, and 26% of the areas have five or more. In the 90 with hazardous areas, 49% has more than 10 accidents, and 77% has more than five. Also, the rate of deaths by 100 accidents is 1.58 in the average of all the data set, and in the hazardous areas is 207. Uh, also in the hazardous area, the most common causes of accidents were the uh, passing another car and closing him, and also an inadequate safety distance that after seeing the traffic here at Bogota, I believe that too. So this is a map where I track some of the accident areas that are with a, a hazardous area in yellow or with a cellular dark spot in black. So normally the ones with hazardous areas are in more in the center in the of the city with really busy roads, a lot of traffic uh, generating that, that, that uh, inadequate safety distance and all. So I just highlighted two examples. Uh, one is a really busy road and the other one there on the top right is a busy road that my colleague from here told me has a lot of heavy track traffic. And Half of this is in bad status or unpuffed. So probably all that traffic is generating all that uh, inadequate safety distance, passing another car and closing him. And that is creating the harsh braking, harsh accelerating, harsh cornering that we are detecting in the hazardous areas of Geotap. The one on the bottom is a, a bad coverage area that had some accidents too. And it's a close corner with outside of the city, you can see. I decided to do another fast visualization here. So it's the same. We have in orange the hazardous areas that have accidents, and in blue the bad coverage areas that have accidents. The size is the number of accidents. So as we expect, we see much bigger size in the hazardous areas than in the bad coverage areas, as we are having more harsh braking, more harsh cornering, then we are having more accidents. And the most interesting thing I got from here the area with more accidents in 2017 in Bogota, that is this one here, with 118 accidents in one year, it's a hazardous area by Geotap data without taking any look at the accidents data that we got from the government. So this gave us a hint that there could be a relation with the data we collect and the data we have from the accidents. So I decided to take a look at it. So first thing I did is similar to the other one. I divide by the number of accidents. So we have in blue from five to 10 accidents, in green 10 to 20 accidents, um, more than 20 accidents in red. Those are the areas with more than. Then I check at the number of erratic driving events per every 100 records. If you remember, we are collecting every second or less. So that's a lot, having three Every three speeding incidents every 100 records is quite a lot. And we see here, in a speeding, for example, a direct increase when we have more accidents in that areas. We have 
also more speed in incidents. Uh, getting in more than 20 will have a much bigger part. Also in the hash driving, hash driving is the hash corning, hash breaking I'm talking about. Uh, we also have more when we have more incidents. You can see two types of hash driving here. One is, this, one is the one I did with the machine learning model checking to the vehicle types. The other one is just with a low threshold to get all the data I could, and they are quite similar here. Again, saying that we have more accidents when we are having, in the areas that we are having more erratic driving events is, again, obvious. But as I said, when you are searching these kind of things, every time you prove the obvious, it's a thing that you are going on the right path. So with this, I started searching for multiple correlations. So that's just one example. There was no easy correlation or direct correlation within the different features of the accidents and the driving data we had. I also test a couple of uh, machine learning models in TensorFlow. So I did a linear classification and a linear regression. Uh, it was not very accurate. That's because we have a lot more driving data than accidents right now. So it's not well distributed and it's real life data. So we are probably missing there some uh, road status, road weather, because I just focus on the harsh driving and harsh and speeding. So the weather, the time of the year, the time, the hour of the day, probably has a lot of impacts there. But there is still something here. If you look at this chart, on the bottom we have the harsh driving per 100 records, and here the speeding per 100 records. Then in blue we have the areas with 5 to 10 accidents, in yellow, the one with 10 to 20, and in red, the one with more than 20. The size of the areas is the number of injuries per accident. So we see that away from the zero, we are starting getting bigger, bigger bubbles, and also the red uh, bubbles that are the ones with more than 20 accidents has more, normally more, has driving and speed events. So just another thing I check, uh, I divide the causes of the accidents in the most common one, if the pedestri pedestrian did something, if the driver did something, or if the road was in a bad status. So driver fault, pedestrian fault, road fault. So when the road is in a bad status, we have a lot more speeding. That's from Geotab, completely different data set. We have a lot more speeding in that area than the other type of uh, causes. That's, I mean, vehicles going, doing a speeding in, an, in a road that is in a bad status is going to lead to something bad for sure. Then when we look at the driver fault, that is the blue here, the road fault was the yellow green one, we see that there is more hash cornering, hash accelerating, and hash braking. That's also, as we were speaking before, if you, the driver is doing, is overpassing a vehicle and closing him, and if he's doing uh, harsh cornering, harsh breaking, that's directly related here. On the other side, I decided to go deeper into when the fault was from the driver, and I, and I check the causes. So we have uh, the two principal ones was bad driving and disobeying laws. So with disobeying laws in orange here, have again, a lot more speeding. is the most common law to disobey, I think, everywhere in the world, the speeding. And then when it's bad driving, we have more harsh cornering, harsh accelerating, and harsh braking. That's as I was saying. If the most common causes are closing a vehicle or inadequate safety distance, that's bad driving, and that's making harsh cornering, harsh braking, harsh accelerating in that area. So just uh, some conclusions to finish. There is no, no easy solution to do that, to abort that. There's no, nothing magic there. But with continuous data collection and gathering and increasing every time the amount of data and how you process it, it's possible to improve road safety using road data. We are at Geotab, we are already doing that with the hazardous driving areas, the cell coverage, the road impediments. There are some governments in the US that are starting to use that data to check at the cities, to get the smart city solutions and insights. And uh, with open platforms such as the one we are doing at Geotab, so I haven't told you this before, but the data set I saw to you, they are in data.geotab.com, and they are for free there. If someone wants to access, they can check the hazardous areas, the temperature, the cell coverage, the road impediments, completely for free. 
So with open platforms and uh, open languages such as Python, we can really develop and we can start being react proactive instead of reactive to prevent uh, accidents and reduce the number of causalities and improve road safety. Uh. <laughs>